Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at using Slider Revolution and adding a video into our background and animating some effects over the top of this. So let's see how easy it is to do that. So I have the Slider Revolution interface open in front of me and the first thing we're going to do is create a new slider. And once we've done that, we've got a whole host of different options we can use and we're just going to stick to the default slider. We're going to come down, we're going to choose a hero scene because what I want in this particular uh, slider is I just want one video to play. I don't want them to loop. So we're just going to stick with the hero scene. We just come down. I'm going to set a few parameters in my actual size just to make sure that the, the slider that I'm working with is going to be the right dimensions. Now, what you want to make sure with this is if you want to play your video in its natural format, you've got to make sure that your X and Y are both correct. So in other words, if you're dealing with 1080p video, then you need to be 1080 by 1920, 720 and so on. To ensure that you've got the right aspect ratio when you're creating your video and your, your layer slides. So in this example, I'm going to be using 1280 by 720. Now this will scale, obviously, because we're setting this to be uh, auto size. So we will make sure that it will scale correctly. But we know that our aspect ratio is going to be correct. And that's all I need to set in this particular section. So I'm just going to hit the save. And then we can switch over and actually start creating our slides. Before I do, I just need to name this. So I'm just going to call this video. I'll hit save again. And that will now save it. And here's our short code should we need it later on. So we're into our slider area. So all I need to do now is come through to our video slider which has no content click on that so we can start editing it and then we'll start working with creating our basic content so you can see we've got a whole range of source options and for this particular example we're going to go with youtube video but obviously you could use vimeo or you could use html5 video if you want to host this yourself so we'll just choose youtube video now what that does is it asks us for the id of the video that we want to embed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my channel on YouTube and as you can see there's all my videos so if I just click on any particular video just to open this up I'll pause it and all I need is this code that comes after the equals sign so we just want to take this little block of code that comes after watch exclamation I say question mark V equals and then that's the video code so we just right click and copy that put that back out the way and we'll paste that into that area so now we've got the video code we want to work with next thing we need to do is just change the image now this is a sort of preceding image so you can create something that has a relevance to your video if you want to so you can have this on this so i'm just going to choose anything so i'm just going to change my image i'm going to choose something i've already got uploaded i'm not really bothered by it and we say okay so there's the basic parameters we can also switch over to the source settings and we can configure some more information based on our video and how we want to interact with it so you can see we've got a whole range of options we can say force cover so we can use that cover photograph i just chose or we can ignore it we can use a dotted overlay we can specify the aspect ratio of our video so that's going to be used useful when you're actually uh, scaling this you can specify your video starts from a certain point and ends at. So if you don't want to play the entire video, you just want to play a little snippet of it or a sort of small section of it. You can put the start and the end times in there. You can specify whether the video loops or whether it just goes through to the end and then stops. And you can see we've got a load of other options on there. We can increase the speed of the video or decrease the speed of the video. We can mute it. We can rewind it at slide start. A whole host of different things. So I'm going to leave it for this example. I'm going to leave it to all the default settings in there. I'm going to leave it muted because I don't want to play anything. And we're just going to leave it at that. So we'll just hit save slide. And that will save the basics of our slider. So we've now got the video embedded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the front end of the site. And we're going to take a little look at what this looks like on the page. Then we'll come back in and we'll start doing some extra little uh, tweaks to our video. Okay, so I'll just refresh the page a second and we'll see that we get our initial image and then we transition into the video. And then I'll just automatically play through as 
we set it up to do. Okay, so that's a little bit of fun now with our video. As with any static image, we can create additional layers on top of our slide. So let's just say, for example, that at a certain point in the video, I wanted a button to pop up that comes into the corner, animates in, is clickable to purchase this video or whatever it is I'm talking about. Well, we can do that easily. We could just click and say we want to add a new button. That'll bring up all the button options we have. So let's just change the text on there from click here and just say, by now, it's that important. And we'll choose a big button. All we'll do is we'll drop that into the bottom corner. And now we come down to our timeline and we can adjust how this is actually displayed on screen. So we don't want that to come on straight away. We want that to come on after say, five seconds. So let's just adjust the start and end time. So that comes on about five seconds. Has a half a second animation. And what we'll do is we'll come up and choose the type of animation we want. So we'll switch to the animation tab and we'll say we want that to come up. We'll say, let's have long from right. And then we'll have it, uh, say long to bottom. So that's going to come in after five seconds, animate in. Let's just save that. Switch back over to our demonstration page and refresh it. And we now find that we get our image to start off with. Our video starts and after five seconds, our buy now button pops in. And allows us to click if we need to. All very cool. We can also adjust the actual duration of our animation timeline. Now, just to make it clear with this, because we've got a hero slide as our slider type, there is only one slide being used. So it doesn't transition to the next one. So this will last for a certain period of time, but it'll keep on playing. So in other words, if we had two slides, it would last for, in this instance, 13 seconds, and then it would transition to the next slide. Because it's a hero slider, that doesn't happen. It's just one slide that this timeline is only used for the animation effects that we want to place over the top of this slider, as opposed to the duration of the slider. And then we move on to another slider. Hope that makes sense. So if we increase the duration of these different items, we now find we've got 13 seconds to work with. So we could say, well, we'll have that one coming on that long. And what we'll do is we'll just add another button in and we'll just change this to, there we go. And we'll change the type of button. And what we'll do now is we'll adjust this. And we'll leave the animation as, as default. I'm not really too bothered about that. So if we scrub along the timeline, we'll see that after five seconds, the first button flies in. And then we get this button. If I put that down, roughly the same position, that'll do. So there we go. So we've now created two different layers of animation. So let's just save that. We'll switch back over to the demonstration page and refresh that and we'll see how that looks on the page. So there's our intro. Our video starts playing. After five seconds, our buy now button pops in. That'll stay in for a certain period of time and then animate out and get replaced with the I said buy now button. So you can see we can easily create multi-layered animations. We can control each layer independently. We can place those over the top of the video so we can have a certain level of interaction. You can even, if you wanted to, create sort of picture in picture by using the video option. So you can see we can put different URL in there or ID. We can adjust the size in, the type of video we want to put in there. But for now, we'll leave that and we'll take a look at that in another video on how we can actually start to create more complicated sliders. 
Well, I hope you found this useful. I hope it's given you a good introduction to how easy it is to actually include videos in your Slider Revolution slides, how you can put animation on the top of it and how you can make those interactive elements so you can get people to buy things, give them information at any particular point in your video and a whole host of other uses you could find for this. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. If you've got any comments or feedback, please leave those in the comment section below. And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It all helps. Until next time, take care.